Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Frank, uh, Frank again, and a rule, why Magic Pros are so clicky and why you will never be a Magic Pro. So I'm here to just give my opinion. This will be a very, very mm, harsh opinion, I guess. And it starts with Frank. Uh, Frank at the time, I think he still works for TCG Player. He wrote articles, he was streaming, he was a big celebrity, and he married Melissa de Toro. Melissa took a job at Wizards of the Coast. This meant, although Frank was already qualified and going to the Pro Tour, he could no longer go as soon as Melissa accepted the internship at, in Seattle. So they both moved to Seattle. I mean, love makes you do some funny stuff, right? And happily ever after right so the reason that frank had to was not able to go to a pro tour outdoor it was his life dream was because of a policy and the policy is to pre prevent favoritism or nepotism in the community the policy policy is very simple the reasoning is very simple is that if your wife works for Wizard of Coast, your wife might feed you information that would help you be a better player. Um, they might, uh, so Wizard of Coast does a lot of testing, right? And the pro tours are normally there to, especially uh, draft, they are recent. So there's not that much testing that goes on prior to the pro tour. Or at least, you know, I would expect a lot of testing to happen before they actually come out with the set in case one of the cards are broken, like Saheeli Raw and Feldian Guardian, right? That's what I would expect anyway. So we have an interesting argument here. Uh, and the first paragraph is saying how awesome Reed Duke is, but Reed Duke's brother is Ian Duke. So however, I understand that his brother is Ian Duke. Randy B Bueller said on a stream a while back that he cannot play because his wife still works at Wizards. So I'm curious as to why this doesn't apply to Reek. Reed. Is it an immediate family thing? Just curious. So we have two relationships here. We have Randy, who his wife works at Wizards of the Coast. Now Randy, he is heavily promoted. He is the poster boy of Wizards of the Coast. He has Vintage League, mod, Super Modern League, Modern League. I mean, pretty much anything with Rocket League, Alphabet League, whatever you want. He has leagues being published officially on the Wizard Coast website and YouTube channel. So this is a guy very, very involved in Magic the Gathering. I, until this moment, I did not realize his wife worked there, but it makes sense. It also makes sense to me why they have some of the developers they do. Because nepotism, that's how it works, right? Instead of hiring people based on ability, you hire people based on who they know, which isn't always bad, but it does lead to abuse, right? And, and that's kind of an interesting discussion because Reed is a very likable person, but his brother does work for Wizard of the Coast. I don't know if he's in R&D, if I had a family member work at Wizard Coast and Vampire Hex Mage was printed, I would be very mad if I wasn't told beforehand so I could buy a bazillion Dark Depths. Because that's exactly the scenario I want to do. I'm sure there's policies on it underlying this, which doesn't, which would not allow me to do that. But that being said, buyouts like this happen all the time and especially playtesting. So imagine all the time, quote, time that goes into playtesting for a draft. Well, wouldn't Melissa or wouldn't Ian know what the best cards were, were going to be? Because they created a set, right? You assume the people who created the set created cards that were stronger than other cards. I remember reading something by that Zach dude who created RTR. And he knew what he was doing. He pushed Abrupt Decay. He pushed Death Right Shaman. Uh, it's not a mystery that those cards were very strong. But Death Right Shaman actually, when it first came out, was considered very weak. But he made it very strong. So he knew how strong the card would be. 
while the majority of pro players did not. And he could have just told someone, hey, well, you can use it this way and then with this way and with this fetch land and you can use your pen opponent's fetch land. Do you think about that? So there are advantages. There are advantages. So that is why we have a rule where somebody who is married to someone else cannot compete at the pro tour level. However, we don't have any restrictions on brothers, mothers, fathers, sisters, or any of that um, because those people obviously are not going to give vital information to their loved ones, right, about this game. No advantage at all. So lots of uh, very interesting uh, developments going on. Uh, one of the biggest ones, in my opinion, is... This isn't even considered nepotism, right? Um, so the fact that Reed Duke is featured so often and is promoted so heavily and Randy Bueller is as well. And then they have relatives who live or who work at w <laughs> Wizards of the Coast. Uh, that's not nepotism in Wizards of the Coast's eyes. Nepotism is only if you're married. That's very strange. Uh, that is quite strange, and these comments are also, I believe, Melissa and Frank have since broken up, so I think Frank can now play at GP, stream, etc. The lengths humans go to play Magic again. <laughs> and then the real answer, I believe he cheated on her multiple times and was dumped. Ah, the long con. Yikes. So, I mean... I could not pass up an article featuring a discussion on nepotism in which, you know, the reason that nepotism is so bad is instead of hiring for ability, like really good developers, you're hiring, oh, hey, I have a niece. He might understand internet. Let's hire him with Magic the Gathering online. I think that's what's happening. When I look at the jobs that uh, Wizard Coach is posting, I look at their legal team, which I interacted with in great detail. I looked at all of this stuff. It kind of all makes sense to me. Like if it was, let's hire people in our community with the best abilities. Why do we have magic on the gathering online when it looks like it's made from 1995 and it has bugs all the time? Why is Magic Arena so bad? And let me put it this way. I know Magic Arena is bad. I know the code has is problematic. You know how I know that? No one's promoting it. Right? It, it got out of beta. Who's actually making videos about that right now? Like, who's interested in playing Magic Arena? Nobody. So I know it's bad. Um, I haven't played it myself. I'm not going to put money into it. I put money into Fate Grand Order. You know, I'm the type of person, ideally, they would want to play Magic Arena because I could spend $1,000 a month and it would be no different from my other mobile games. I'd probably drop Fate Grand Order because I'm kind of sick and tired of the really low drop rates on that game. But, so I did get Jay Alter, by the way, in case you guys play that game. But it took way more money than I wanted to. Uh, it just took too much. And I know the other unit that I really want is... I mean, I know she's coming soon, and it's going to be a bloodbath. So it all kind of makes sense to me now, like the judge system, why we have sexual predators, why all this stuff happens when we can hire quality individuals, give them like a decent salary, right? Like, because that's what they should be paid, train them properly. Instead of a free volunteer organization that Wizard Coast has no connection to at all and no liability, monitor the store owners, which you have to do, especially if they're at a beach location where they also sell bikinis and only female bikinis. I would imagine that's definitely a store owner you want to monitor. Um, so, I mean, a lot of things now make more sense. If we assume the host system is based on nepotism, then it makes sense. I mean, Magic Arena will be Magic Arena. Magic the Gathering Online will be Magic the Gathering Online. And this is what we're stuck with. The legal attorneys will be the legal attorneys. And 
our promoted Magic Vintage League will feature people that Randy Bueller likes. Anyway, bye guys.